All right, guys. So we are going to take a look now. This is the example game for the um, the deck featuring our splice mechanic. Uh, opening hand's pretty good. We got three lands in hand. Um, we are sitting on a mountain, which is fantastic because occasionally you do have troubles finding those. Um, we do have the ire as well as two of our splice spells and a hinder for backup on the control. Um, now my opponent is playing rather a large deck, sitting around. Um, ooh, am I going to do math? Uh, 106. Um, 104, maybe. I'm not going to do math. Um, anyways, it's still going to uh, prove to be quite a challenge for me, but you'll see how it all plays out in the end. Um, starting off with a bit of land. Um, land ramp, I am going to sit down. There's no you know, rhyme or reason as to playing this. Uh, we draw into a sift, we have an island. Um, we will be able to get that second blue mana that we need on turn three. Um, it's great that sift is an instant. You want to make sure to wait till the end of your opponent's turn to cast that in case you need to play a counter spell instead. Um, should be pretty common sense at this point in time. Uh, we do draw into an airy pre procession. Uh, it's something that you can play if you decide or, or in the earlier game. Uh, if there's something specifically you're going to look for, uh, I, I like to keep it to tutor up the, the glacial, glacials. Um, you know, it's it's kind of better to hold those a little bit until you find a you know a spell that you absolutely need. You know, maybe you need to tap something out or bounce a creature. Um, so I, I definitely hold on to those. Um, as, as long as possible until I find, you know, an absolute need for it. So you see, I'm going to pass the turn, and like I said, you can wait till the end of your opponent's turn to cast Sift, um, so that you have mana open for Hinder if you need it. Opponent's going to Rainbow Growth. There's no reason, really, for me to counterspell the, the land fetch. Um, you can feel free to disagree with me on that, but I personally do not see a need. Um, I'd much rather, you know, let him play all the land he wants, and when he kind of finally gets that big bomb into play, and then I can play the Hinder. To slow that down. So you see, getting more land, this is great. Uh, this deck really needs as much land as it can get. You want to, you know, keep ramping up. Um, the more you have, the more you can cast, the more you can splice spells. Um, it's really great, especially when you come to stuff like the Consuming Vortex here, and it requires four to splice it. Um, so, you're, you know, your low-cost spell is going to be reached through. It's still going to cost five to play the reach through in addition to the spliced um, consuming card. So, um, just something to keep in mind, hitting the land is, is kind of very important with this deck. So, opponent makes his first play, Whispering Cloak. I am going to counterspell that. It is very hard. Uh, this deck has nothing to do with artifacts or enchantments, so you want to be able to hit those before they come onto the field. Um, you have a lot of kind of creature control, but when it comes to the other stuff, you want to get rid of that. And Hinder, remember, uh, gives you the option to put it on top of your opponent's library or on the bottom. Um, because he is running the Divining Top, putting it on top of his deck is not going to slow him down any. Um, if he wants to get rid of it, he can just move it around. Um, so I'm, of course, going to put it on the bottom. Uh, you're going to end up doing that most of the time anyways, just to, to get rid of it. It's it's definitely the, the better option. Um, and Headman afterwards to play Reach uh, Through the Mists. It'd be important to you know be aware of... Sorry about those. Um, be aware of having that mana available to cast that spell afterwards. So now we draw into a lava spike and we can use it. Um, we had the option to splice on those, but we're still looking at two splice spells that really can't help us at this point in time. Um, so we're going to pass the turn. You could have there, if you wanted, played the, the procession to find the glacial um, and give you something to splice onto some of these earlier spells. Uh, that's really going to be your, your best option for early splice is probably the glacials. Um, or the puppetry if you do come into aggro. Uh, be aware you can also use the puppetry to untap your own lands. Um, if you needed a second red, something like that, it is a possible solution. Uh, I, I do think the procession is great. Um, it would be just that much better if it was at instant speed instead of sorcery. Um, sorcery really slows it down, especially in this deck where basically all of your arcane spells come at instant. Um, so now we're going to reach the end of my opponent's turn. I am going to plus to cast the Pure Through Depths. Um, these are my five. I did actually find a Glacial Ray that I was looking for um, to be able to handle that. No point really at this point in time grabbing a second Vortex. With some of these uh, Splice spells, you really only need one of them in hand because you're going to get to continue to reuse those spells um, as you add them onto others. So you see, I, I do take the Glacial Ray. Um, which I will use to be able to deal with this guy. The Rock Slide Elemental is nothing that's that's too scary for me to deal with um, at all, but, it, you know, it's it's something I want to get off as soon as possible. Um, now I have the option I can... I'm casting the Procession. I don't have anything, if you look here, 
that is end of turn that's worth playing. There's no card draw, there's no counter spells. Um, so right now I, I can feel free and safe to cast the area possession. Um, sorry, procession. And I am splicing on the glacial ray. Um, and I am going to use it as you see. I'm going to fetch out uh, Reach Through the Mists. Uh, I like to fetch this out when there's there's nothing else you need. Um, you know, of course, obviously, if you have the processions, you're going to fetch out something important um, to change the game state. If not, I like to get these Reach Through the Mists because they are your cheapest um, version. I mean, you do have the the uh, the red one, but this is the cheapest. Uh, you're going to be heavier on blue, the cheapest blue that you're going to get and be able to splice a spell onto. Um, so, you know, it's only going to be one blue in addition to the cost of the splice. Just something to keep in mind. You, you're uh, going to be likely to, to try and track those down when you get to it. So now my opponent makes his first big play with a um, Nath of the Guilt Leaf. Uh, this is going to be troublesome, but I do have the Consuming Vortex, and I can continue to bounce this card as long as I cast this for its um, splice. Uh, I get another land, which is great. Like I said, you want to hit your land drops on this. Um, in this case, you know, it's going to cost me five to be able to splice on the Vortex. Um, it's very expensive to play that for the splice, um, but necessary, as you can see. Uh, so I am going to use that to draw a card and bounce his guy back to his hand. Um, he's actually going to end up trying to recast this for several turns, um, and I think this is a great example of the power of these uh, splay spells and the fact that you don't have to get rid of them. They can stay in your hand um, and continue to, to give you that advantage. Um, another thing, like I said, this deck has been running pretty well in this game um, because I have managed to uh, sit on land drops. So I came into a point here. Um, I know that I need four, um, four mana available to splice, but, um, you know, I can't splice it onto one of these because of my mana count. I need to splice it onto um, either a, a Psychic Puppetry or a Glacial Ray. Uh, here, I did decide to use the Glacial Ray to burn my opponent down um, and splice onto that to bounce the, the Elf. So now my opponent is going to attempt to replay it yet again. Um, he's trying to find ways around it, something else that he can play in addition that will do... Um, you know, kind of keep me on edge, give me two things to bounce, because if there's two, then I, you know, have to handle only one of them at a time. Um, do draw into a lava spike, which is great. I will burn my opponent um, and have plenty of mana available to splice the consuming. Um, and you notice as well, I also have extra mana available if I find the need to use a psychic puppetry or the consuming. Um, at this point in time, we do want to be aware of our graveyard count. We are sitting at 10 cards. Um, we have two Iyers in hand, and my opponent is getting just about at 10. Um, so you're at this point where, at the end of turn, I could um, essentially cast one of these two-cost cards in order to up my graveyard count so that... Um, sorry, should have logged out of that before doing this. Um, but be able to, you know, get these spells into the graveyard to get my count up so that uh, I can do that 12 damage. So end of turn here, I am going to actually fully cost Consuming Vortex to bounce that um, because at this point in time, I'm assuming that I'm going to end the game right here. Um, I am going to cast a Psychic Puppetry um, to up my graveyard count. You see it is now at 12, but here's where I make the mistake. Um, so I'm at 12, and I'm going to cast the Ire for the win. Um, but you'll notice right here, I am at 12, but there was one issue that came up earlier. Hinder. Hinder is not an arcane spell. So I have 12 cards in, in the graveyard, but it is only going to do 11 damage to my opponent because Hinder is not an arcane. What the mistake was is I should have realized that and played the second Psychic Puppetry. And again, you can't splice these because they go back to hand. You have to fully play it. You see, I have plenty of mana available. My opponent's tapped out. He's not playing blue. There's no chance of this getting countered. Um, I needed to play this Puppetry uh, in order to um, get this uh, ire off for the win. Um, I didn't realize that. You see here, I make the play. And I, I actually stalled out for a moment and was like, wait, how was he at one life? What did I do wrong? Um, but that was my mistake. The hinder was there. Sorry, the hinder was there, and I needed to get rid of the puppetry. So this is a loss, but I'm going to consider it a win because, you know, it's just a slight mistake. Um, this this was basically a win for me and for this deck. Um, but I think it was a good idea. shows you a lot of how the draw works. You got the interactions um, and the win off ire. So I hope you enjoy it, and you check out the other decks for the series.